much fun to be, be uh, here with you today and talk about something that um, has been so, so true to your life. Um, and this whole notion of, of do, uh, do more of what you love. And uh, Pop Sugar, for, for those of you who uh, don't know, was founded as, uh, as a kind of a part-time venture uh, in your living room uh, 10 years ago, and it is now a profitable global uh, media and technology company with 500 employees. Yes. Um, so this, this can all be done, uh, living proof. So, and Lisa's new book, um, How Are You Happy? Uh, she has generously uh, provided a copy for each of you, um, and they will be in your goodie bag. And it's a really good read. Um, you yeah. will want to read this book. Um, so, so, Lisa, let's just talk a little bit more um, about this notion of do more of what you love, and uh, it's kind of been a rule for you. Um, how has it guided your business decisions over, over these past 10 years? Yeah, I think um, it, it sounds like very easy advice, but it's not always easy to do. And a lot of us get distracted along the way or feel it's really hard to do that. But along the way, I've always picked up clues of things that I wanted to do that just felt right. And it made working easy and effortless. And I was able to just put my all into it. From a company perspective, you know, Pop Sugar really was based on a hobby. I wanted to teach myself how to write every day. I wanted to write. I didn't know how to start. And, you know, there were a million other places already out there. So I started and I got all this great feedback from the audience. And from there, we've been able to you know, build upon other verticals that maybe I wasn't uh, as excited about, but other people were. And so hiring great writers and figuring out how to concentrate on things that I love, but also that our audience loved. So we did have to you know, think beyond just me too. But I would still get really excited to see what people were responding to. So that made me just as happy. And that was feeding more of what I loved. And then I would also say from a business perspective, we launched something like the Pop Sugar Must Have Box, which um, was not- talk, a part talk about that in case you're not familiar yeah, with it. Yeah, so um, this was not part of our original business plan at all when we started the company. And um, you know, we wanted to be able to extend the brand into people's homes. So it's a monthly box, a monthly subscription box uh, for $40. You, you were before Birch Box and Bark Box and I everybody think else's they were box, all, I think. They were starting. What had, the genesis for us was that my kids were getting a craft box, and they were like so excited to do this on the weekends. And I was like, I want my own. So <laughs> I, I didn't want to do crafts, though. So um, you know, we wanted fashion, beauty. And so we have a quarterly box for $100, and we have... Um, $100 monthly box. And again, it's doing more of what we love. Like we love telling people about new products that we love and brands that we love. So being able to package this up into a box and send it to you each month and then being able to experience the surprise and delight that they have when they open it just makes us even happier. Is that it's sort of your, your hiring philosophy? Do you use that as a screen? I mean, is, is pop sugar just full of happy people? <laughs> I am sometimes told I live in a happy bubble and I realize that the world is not always so happy and we can still touch on very serious matters at Pop Sugar, but passion. I would say passion is, is the number one um, thing that we look for when we're hiring folks. So I don't care what it is that you're geeking out about, whatever you're coming to look for to do at the company and the job you're being hired for, you have to be so into it that when we're having this interview, you just like can't stop talking about whatever it is that you're going to be writing or you're going to be building. And um, it, it comes through you know, easily for those who really are super passionate about it. So I would say more of the passion, which is doing more of what you love. So you've grown very rapidly. Um, but I understand that you have a number of people who've been with you since since the beginning and, and been there seven, eight, nine, ten years. So something very positive is going on. Yes. We, I mean, we are celebrating our 10-year anniversary this year. And so there are folks who have been with us since the beginning, and we put balloons on their chairs, and now I'm like, ah, oh, there's another one. It's so it's so amazing to have people um, grow up with us, really, too. I mean, you never know when you hire somebody in their early 20s if they're going to stay with you, you know, as long as they have. And so we've forged some really great leaders within the company, and people I really like staying with us because their jobs have changed so much. They've learned so many new skills. It they didn't have like leave, the same so, job. Yeah, yeah they've, they continue to keep growing and learning within the company. So if they're happy and they like the culture, then they want to stay. So are there times when this philosophy, do more of, of what you love, uh, when you've made decisions based on, on that philosophy, are there times when they're counterintuitive? Like that doesn't feel like it makes sense, but I'm going to do it anyway? Yeah, I think, um, I, well, I talk a lot in the book about playing nice. And, you know, there's definitely a lot of companies out there that do play dirty. 
And I think for us, you know, we know we could do some of the tricks and things that other companies are doing, whether, you know, it's buying traffic or rolling up numbers. And if you really tear behind the scenes, you can see that they're not what they say they are. And Pop Sugar does not do that. So I think staying strong on your beliefs of, you know, playing nice. And I, I believe in karma. So I, a lot of these companies actually have already gone out of business or starting to go out of business or people are starting to see that it's they're not what they seem. And you won't find that with us. And you are still privately held. Yes. Um, so you can really make all the decisions, um, <laughs> you and Brian. And um, I think that's a, a privilege. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, um, so you have a, a, a process, I guess it is, the start small, get feedback, uh, course correct. Um, you talk about this in, in the book. Can you can you tell the audience a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. When I started Pop Sugar, I didn't just quit my job and start getting on a computer and writing 24-7. The first thing I did, I was actually working in advertising, and I, I wrote in the morning before I went to work. I took a lunch break, and I would write stories, and when I got back home again, and I think it's important to know that, you know, it's really hard to find the right time to maybe start a side project, but if you can start setting, setting small goals for yourself, you feel really great when you then can kind of knock it off your list, you've accomplished it. And at the same time, I got all this feedback from the audience, like people were finding the site. I wasn't even telling my friends I was doing it at first, so once people started finding it and there were 500 or 5,000 and then within a year, a million readers, I obviously didn't know a million people in real life. So to be able to get this huge focus group, this was before social media, there was a huge community on the sites, giving me feedback and encouraging me to keep going, it just fueled the fire for me to do more and more and more. So you were, let's see, you're the mother of three girls. And so if you started it 10 years ago, isn't your oldest 10? Yes, Katie turned 10 in June. And so this was all going on while that was all going on. Yes, I started, mm. um, I actually quit my job in advertising six months after doing Pop Sugar by myself, really, as this hobby. It was growing so quickly. And then Brian said, you need to go all in, build this audience, quit your job. And at that point, I found out I was pregnant. So I was like, great. <laughs> Good timing, um, but it kept it kept growing and growing, and then Brian actually joined me in April of 06, and then the first day of training at our house with our first six employees, I actually went into labor with my daughter two weeks early. Love that. Yeah. <laughs> Rapid iteration. You talk about that in, in the book. Could you, could you tell the audience what you mean by that, and sort of how did that fit into the process of, of building Pop Sugar? We, we adapt constantly. So we um, put stuff out there, we fail, we put stuff out there, we do great, we figure out from there what we want to do next and how to build on what we want to do. So, you know, Brian is an engineer um, and loves to build stuff. So we, we've tinkered with things. Um, and in some cases, it's been extremely successful, even, even just from content topics. You know, we'll write something and it'll go completely viral and I'll be like, let's figure out how to make 20 more of those. And the other time we'll write something, we'll be like, that one totally fell flat, why? And really looking at it. And so another thing is, um, again, social media wasn't around when we first started. So adapting to mobile wasn't around either. You know, being in people's um, hands versus, uh, and getting a headline from social versus people coming to the site direct every day for their break, which is how it originally started. And having to adapt to, well, how do the headlines change accordingly? Or how did the image change now? Because those are things maybe we didn't think about back in 2006 when it started, but we have to think a lot about in 2016. So you, you have, as trusted advisors, a huge audience. Um, but offline, who, yeah. who are your trusted advisors and um, how has their feedback helped you course correct along the way? I mean, we have an amazing board. We have great advisors. I talk about building an all-star team a lot in the book, and this team can be, you know, anyone from people who are just helping you get through everything. There's a lot of noise and chaos that's out there, and sometimes it's directed to me, and it can be, you know, actual work advice. And sometimes I talk about how, like, Beyonce is on my all-star team, and she lifts me up, and just listening to quotes that she has will make me realize, like, I'm going to follow that rule because if, you know, it's working for Beyonce, maybe it'll work for me too. We could all try that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Just really helpful. Yeah. Did you ever notice how much I look like Beyonce, by the way? <laughs> you know, I just, I'm just not myself today. Um, uh, yeah. Um, what about your, your personal life? Are your advisors for your professional life the same as your personal life? Or do, how do you think about the professional and, and the personal? Are they distinct? Are they incorporated? They're usually different. 
they're usually different. Um, you know, I think it's actually even probably hard on my parents is a good example because my dad has been such a big influence in my life and teaching me to what, do what I what love. What did he do for a living? He's still a lawyer. He's still practicing into his 70s. He loves his job. He led by a great example. I mean, I love watching him and the energy he gets from whether it's opening new offices or building a new team or, or practicing, uh, you know, for a case. And be able to see that at a really young age and throughout my entire career. Um, but they've helped me so much. But at the same time, when it comes to me talking about Pop Sugar with them, I think sometimes they are, you know, upset that I don't talk as much about it. Because sometimes when I'm just with my family, I don't, I don't want to think about work. And while with Brian and I, our lives are completely blended. If we're at dinner at home or at, you know, breakfast in the office, we may be totally, completely blending work and life stuff that has to get done. But then when I'm, you know, with some of my best friends from college or my parents or cousins, like, I don't necessarily want to talk about work. And I think sometimes that's hard for them because they want to hear all the exciting stuff. And that's when I want to turn it. Well, off. I think also <laughs> it's, it's what you do is tangible. They can see it, yeah. you know, unlike a lot of professions where your parents are like, I just don't understand it. So I, I can see. It took them a while to figure out and understand what pop sugar was, <laughs> but they get it now. But they get it. <laughs> What about your daughters? Have they started giving you advice? Um, I know five, you've got 10, you've got one in the middle and a three-year-old. Yes, a 10, a seven, seven and a three-year-old. Right. Yes, I are gave they, my day now uh, trusted advisors and providing yeah, input. Yeah, well, they don't read the site yet, um, but, you know, my seven, my 10-year-old, we, you know, has been to the office. She actually grew up in the office for the first three years and came in with us, um, but I gave her the book and she's like, mommy, I'm so proud of you. This is amazing. She's an avid reader. I was like, tell me what you think. So she read it. She came back in the next night. She's like, it's so good. She's like, I'm 30 pages in, and you only curse three times. <laughs> so I said, well, what about the rest of it? And she's like, well, it's good, but I'm not really looking to get a job right now. <laughs> so she put it down and went back to, like, Harry Potter. <laughs> you're, I think you're a little bit unusual. I mean, you're a lot unusual in many ways, but a little bit unusual uh, to me in the years that we've, we've known each other you really are happy and you appear mostly very, very stress free and starting your own business, having it for 10 years, having three children. You really don't don't seem to be stressed about, you know, the balance, one of my yeah. least favorite um, concepts. Um, but, <laughs> you know, the, the notion of balance, you don't yeah. seem to be worried about it. No, I, I, um, I like to say forget balance. I like being pushed out of my comfort zone. I don't feel like I grow if I don't. Um, Brian very much likes to be unbalanced. Anytime anything is somewhat balanced, he wants like another kid or now he wants a puppy, which is he, we're not getting. He is so, <laughs> I think he's so great. He is great. And that's part of it too. I mean, I really have such an amazing team and there are people when I am super stressed out, I've learned when to say no. I know when to ask for help. And I know how to prioritize. If I want to make sandwiches for my kids at school one day, I will figure out how to get that done because that will make me happy. And I think that, uh, I'm not going to lie, I think living on the West Coast has softened me up. You know, I grew up on the East Coast, and I, I believe I have this really hardcore East Coast work ethic, but I've been on San Francisco for, you know, 16 years now, and I think that people are very happy there, and, and that rubs off. And so I'm kind of hoping I can project that back, especially here in New York. You guys need it a little more than, than uh, we do in San Francisco. Lisa was really excited today uh, to be in New York because she gets to wear these awesome shoes. And um, can't just, wear heels in San Francisco. Don't wear those in San Francisco. Hills everywhere. Yeah, well, that's great. How, how do you make decision making at the company between you and Brian? I mean, again, that's a that's an assignment. I'm not sure everyone would volunteer uh, to do work with your spouse yes. every day, every night. How do you divide the decision making? I mean, we, we, it is pretty clear. Um, I, you just decide everything and I, tell I him that, everything. yeah, I mean, Brian said it, like Brian clearly uh, is advanced in his yes. thinking. Uh, no, he jokes around, I clearly found her number one. Um, but he, he's great, he's totally supportive. I mean, I really am on the content side of stuff. And while I do think about, you know, global expansion for us and new things that we want to invest in, you know, he really um, handles more of the business side. He's actually really great with design. Um, so he thinks more about site layout and, you, you know, but for the most part, we do a lot of stuff together, you know, especially if it's new hires that are really important to the team. And, you know, we just, we, we 
are opposites in many ways, but in things that don't necessarily matter. Like mm -hmm. he likes spicy food and I like sweet food. So like that doesn't matter for work, right? So for, from a work perspective, we are attracted to the same types of people that we want to work with. We see the value in other people that we know we'll learn from. And I think that we've been lucky enough to have a lot in common in that sense. And it hasn't, the hardest thing for us really is figuring out what's for dinner. That's, we make a lot of decisions during yeah. the day. It's like by the end of the day, neither of us want to figure that one out. Yeah, that's so great. Um, you know, this this is a wonderful audience, not only for Pop Sugar but for the book. And I I would guess that a lot of you would like a a couple of thoughts from Lisa as we close out in our last two and a half minutes. Um, if you had some practical steps that women in this audience could take to um, sort of vision their future, if you will, and and put themselves on the path to doing more yeah. of what you love? Yeah, I think that what's really important is um, picking up on some clues along the way. People are complimenting you in certain ways. You're like, oh, I, I'm really good at that. Maybe I should do more of this. Um, and I think that you really have to start small. And that is one of the big things, like really taking your time, starting small, setting those small goals, Finding your all-star team. I think it's really important to know you shouldn't do things alone. People do want to help each other out, and there's a lot of really amazing people who probably want to help you and have information and advice that they can help with. And then I talk a lot about working hard and playing nice, and I think that people need to realize none of this comes easy. I mean, we've put our all into this for the, over the past 10 years, and, and it is it's a lot of hard work, um, but it's it's been really great for us and we've been playing nice along the way and that's only helped us you know create more partnerships hire really great people and create a company culture that we're really proud of and, and you should be thank congratulations you. on all of it thank you good luck with the book enjoy Thanks the so book much. it really is terrific thank you.